Brent was born in the small town of Warsaw, New York, and studied at Bard College and the University of Michigan, where he received an Avery Hopwood Award in Poetry. Please welcome Brent. So um, I'm going to be reading from This Is My New Book, The Ghost in Us Was Multiplying. It was just published last month by Noemi Press. Um, you can buy it if you would like to, or you can just peruse. Um, okay. <clears throat> this is the first poem in the book. It's called This Is What I Have Been Made For. The body keeps asking the body to become a zero or a sum. This is the lesson of intimacy. This is the lesson of less than me. It begins in a quietness sometimes far. A cup on the shelf reveals my body to be sand, too late to fire it in the kiln. Impossible to drink from, I fill it up with water. Where did I go, says the boy who has never been a boy. A hole in the wood becomes a church like scaffolding, the mountain I cannot climb, the cup I cannot drink from, and this somehow relieves me. I cling to my beliefs. Nothing makes it not a mountain. I know afraid is so like scaffolding. I know the hole in me is where a steeple would be. I can sleep here after the last of the cinders cool. A ladder leans against a ladder longingly, but shall not, shall not climb on thee. This is what I have been made for, for to walk across a roofless me made of breath and not of wood. When it tumbles, less than sky is God's ambivalence. Can everyone hear okay? Okay. Um, this is called, sorry. This is called casual sex. <clears throat> Woo! San Francisco. Take that, Facebook. Okay. Um, I am, I, I did actually tell my amazing boyfriend that maybe we should go and sling eggs at Mark Zuckerberg's, ho Z Zuckerberg's house um, while we're up here, so that might be occurring. Um, casual sex, th which has nothing to do with eggs or Mark Zuckerberg. But maybe it does. Casual sex. I have to say it a million times. You're not to whom it may concern, but whom could make an opening in him like the smoke in this language I intrude upon while he, blubbering of heart, was all too tucked inside the minus sign I struck around my neck. How much longer could I hold my head up to look at him, the blackout in me, jingling, him of dog leash, of muzzle, climbing in reverse like a thief through my cartoon window. I found him like I find everything, on my way home from the euphemism on the wrong side of town, the mouth inside of brick where night can go on being night until it finally passes out inside some other animal's ambition. That's where I buried the clocks, in case you're wondering. The coils inside them stammered. Meanwhile, the nightingales go at it, declaiming their anthem for my face as I wipe it clean of every hymn inside of him inside that oubliette. It isn't hard to fall inside of falling. My hymn inside of him makes me you, a double preposition, a corridor in briefly, the mind outside the mind in me. Sky math. How like a window the mountain shakes you. Substitute you for heat and the other handholds, granite, breath, noise, fear, the bulbous parts of the roots you climb. A rock-shaped quietness empties the bowl. What's audible from all that twitches above tree line? This empty page of sky is made of you, of sound, but exceeds it. How could it be that you find yourself looking down to where the ones who came before you, who held their breath and bathed you, got stuck and stayed there? How could it be that you can't just pull them up with you, those trees scooped still, bleached into bone, bleached into one noun as big as all of it, elsewhere, without going? This anywhere abiding here, this half-inflated wind, less than orange, the sun rescued hue of it, this orphan. 
There are no bodies on the chairs now, but they aloft the chairs talk to each other when stirred like you do, pushing their complaint through keyhole behind which the snow, the open mouth of snow, the nothing song of it, as if it could be history, the grasses combed flat under new antennae, their sharp green perfections. It melts now, daily, the monastery door. What cloud made its bed here? What ladder? What poem climbing down? Um, and this is called, this is a prose poem, it's called The Properties of Nectar. When I woke up in the stranger's apartment, there was a slow-moving wasp on his pillow. He was washing his face in the bathroom. The night before, I did the same. He told me he was embarrassed by the mess. I told him I was an archaeologist. I remember Tom of Finland in the faucet crusted with lime. How early is loneliness, the upside-down arrow shaped like bird claw. If I had only stayed there, looking in his mirror while he slept in the other room, I might have never lost my face. A boulder in the meadow severs shapelessness from shapelessness, the butter on my lips, too continuous with petals. As he filled the sink, I carried the pillow to the window and crushed the wasp against the glass. His mustache was just a little longer than the rest of his facial hair, and I realized this must have taken some effort. The properties of nectar are determined by means of tracing its limits. Before I left his apartment, I put the pillowcase in my coat pocket. He didn't call, so I cut it into squares. Slowly, I sewed the whole thing back together. I used to go to a bar on 8th Street, the hole in the wall. That was before everything started to happen on the internet. A little flag waits for some hawk to light to recognize its own body as a branch, as a system of diverging. There were stickers on the wall from Queer Nation, and I wondered if the men who stuck them there were still alive. That was before cell phones, and the men I would meet wrote their telephone numbers on scraps of paper. None of the pants I wore back then had pockets, so I just swallowed the numbers they gave me. To guide into the mouth, to light upon the arrows, their white wings opening. I never knew the color or trajectory. Sometimes they got caught and cut the lining of my throat. Even now, if a man approaches me to ask my name, I'm afraid all those numbers will start to bleed. I try not to speak in public, especially in places that should be private, like the locker room. In the artificial light, a stranger removes his clothes, the hidden throat of masculinity. As with a bell, the bucket spills. The darkness of a line summons clarity, the certainty of shirtlessness. The distance between us increases with his nakedness, and I know I should not feel this way. Behind his body is the pool, where my want gives way to foam. What circle inside the mind carves out muscle? My lack, his body's shadow. His penis painted slowly, a hydrant in reverse, an upside down emergency. The color is an afterthought. I make it smudge inside me. I make it all stop moving. I don't say a word, but I know that the name for the hole I have made is a light. And then just two more. Is that okay? Okay. Um, oh, I just turned something on. Hopefully that's okay. Um, <laughs> so um, this is about drones. Um, it's called the flight cage. After so many years of abbreviated sky, the new bird is cast from the bars of its former cage. What's left of the aviary is the no longer boy, a soldier unable to exit a door he never entered. He drops off the kids, puffs out his little adopted cloud into Nevada. Some of it stays inside him, the hugely never of Nevada. The lattice between the species begins to curve. It coats his lungs. He begins his tour of duty, flicks on the computer, the only window in the operation room, 
eye of the new bird, which has no eye. He sleeps with his own half open, holding the bird with his invisible string, as if the war were not unkind. The casualties, what is a casualty if not swallowed by its facelessness? The digital idea of death comes flapping across the water. The blood can be viewed from a satellite, the way that mourning spills immediately through the minus sign, through the semblance of a bull. Um, now I'm going to read what I kind of feel like is the most painful poem in the book. And I thought about following it up with something softer, but I think actually just given our current state, <laughs> our, our current, you know, where, where we're at, um, I want it to just have its own space. Um, so I, this is a poem for uh, Kenneth Wade Harding, who was shot here in San Francisco by the police uh, for not paying his bus fare in 2011. It's called The Frequencies. Sometimes I think I'm a tree. The utility pole that history made of that yellow pine shipped west from the mills of Mississippi, sheathed entirely in staples. Run your fingers up and down my little goalposts, those almost squares that cover me, anomaly as true as foliage. My stuck-in halos through which I was last seen at the yard sale on the corner of the concert on Thursday or the rally on Sunday for the eighth anniversary of the war or for the boy who was shot in the back when he tried to run away from the police. He was alive and he didn't pay his fare and he ran and he was only 19 and no. The police say there is no say entirely. He was running before he even got on the bus. 10 times in the back, 10 times running entirely. In the late 15th century, the word for victim fell into someone's mouth, and he had and has and they a name. The police say their guns can't fire a shot like the one that no. They say it was he, it was the boy who, no, there is no unpunctured anyone. What I mean is history. There is no completely stapled to the pine. No sentence whose edges have not been no, entire, despite the desire for grief to, a commonplace, a victim, a solitary, not them, whose feather, whose etymology has not been disintegrating. Time is always getting rained on and peeling, a who, outlived by the tooth that put it there. A name fell into no. What does it matter the size of the caliber after 10 times kills anything remotely resembling a him or a them, a who, caliber, the internal diameter of a name fell into someone's mouth, gone, 10 times gone, the weight of all those wires above and the voices stuck inside them, and when are they going to fall? Thanks. <laughs>